let's put all this together in a new project. We'll open up Windows and Classic Desktop, choose a console application, and we'll name it Inheritance Demo, although we will be demonstrating all three of our concepts. We could put our class right in here for program, but it's better to put each class in its own file. So we're going to say add class. We'll name our new class employee. The first thing we're going to do is to mark our new class public. Now let's give our new class some properties. For example, we will have a string property called name. We'll have a protected property of type double named vacation days. Protected means this can be seen by this class and any class that derives from this class. We'll have a public virtual method called take vacation. This is public and can be seen by any method of any class and it's virtual indicating that we expect that this method will be overridden in derived classes. Now let's create a constructor for our class and pass in the parameter name. And we will assign the name property to that parameter. We're also going to override the toString method that every class inherits from the most base class object. We do not need to return the base string. The goal here is to give the employee class its own two string that will allow us to see the value of our employee. So we're going to say in the employee class, the value of name is equal to, and here we'll use string interpolation to put in the name. Let's close off that square bracket. And now when we asked to right line the employee, it will use this overridden to string. Let's go back to the project and add another class, and this class we will call worker. The first thing to do is to make worker public, and the next thing to do is to indicate that it derives from employee. So we use the colon and then the name of the base class. Inside the worker class, we're going to create a public property of type double called hourly wage. We're then going to create our constructor, which will take two values, the name as a string and the wage as a double. Now the name needs to go up to the parent class, and so we use the colon and keyword base and pass in the name. That will send the name up to the employee class. Now in the body of the constructor, we can set the hourly wage to the value that was passed in. We're now ready to override the virtual method from employee, and you can see IntelliSense can help us with that. We choose take vacation. That sets up our override and also chains up to the base class. We don't need that, so let's take that out and we're going to adjust the number of vacation days for the worker to 10. Or more accurately, we'll add 10 days to the worker's vacation. Once again, we're going to use override, but this time we're going to override to string. Let's get rid of the call up to the base, and we're going to give this derived class its own to string method. Let's bring it down to a new line so we can fit in the vacation and put in vacation days as well. We'll close it off with a semicolon. Let's get rid of that extra quote. And we're all set. This class can now identify itself when we call console write line. It will override the two string, which, which is what console write line depends upon. Finally, we'll go back to the project. We'll add one more class, and this will be of type manager. Again, we'll make the class public. And once again, we will indicate that it derives from employee. Let's give our manager class a public property of type bool. 
which is going to be called company car. Does this manager get a company car? Then we're going to create our constructor and pass in the manager's name and a boolean as to whether he or she has a car and we'll chain up to the base passing in the name as we did for the worker. We can now set our property company car to our parameter has car. And let's go ahead and override the method take vacation. Once again, we don't need to call up to the base. This being a manager, we're going to increase the manager's vacation days by 15. Now let's override to string so we can display the manager's status. Each overrides the take vacation method that was marked virtual in the base class. Let's go to our main program. We're going to create an instance of employee. We'll give that object the name Bob and we'll create a new worker. Remember worker is a employee and so that's perfectly legitimate. And we will give Bob an hourly rate of $35. Now let's create a second employee and that object's name will be Joe. Joe will be a new manager. Remember that manager is a employee. So that too is perfectly legitimate. And this is where polymorphism comes in and shows its strength. Let's create one more employee. The object's name will be Sally and we'll create a new worker instance which we will assign to that object. And we'll give Sally 2750 because of the pay disparity. The next thing we can do is to create a list of employee objects. This uses generics which we will be discussing later in this course but it is simply a list and we're going to call that list employees and instantiate that list saying new list of employee. That allows us to initialize that list with our three employees, Joe, Bob, and Sally. Now that we have a list of employees, we can create a for loop setting i to be less than the count of employees. Remember we start with zero. For each iteration of the for loop, we're going to take the value of i, that is 0, 1, and 2, and in each case we will call the method take vacation that was virtual in employee and overridden in worker and manager. We will now call right line and pass in that employee object off of the employee's collection. So it will iterate through the collection and show the two workers and the manager, treating each as an employee. Let's run that. And you can see through the magic of polymorphism that in that collection of employees we have a manager and two workers and each one handles the vacation appropriately because that's what we overrode. We are only allowed to invoke properties and methods that are common to the employee class because what we have is a list of employees. If we were to try to invoke a method from manager or worker derived from employee coming out of our collection of employees, well let's see what would happen. Let's turn to our manager class and give it a method drive car. Now to simulate drive car we'll check to see if the manager has a company car and if so we will simply write out to the console driving the car. Now that method is unique to the manager. If we had an instance of manager there'd be no problem calling that but what we have is a collection of employees. So if we try to call drive car on our employees not only will that not work but it won't even compile. When we have a collection of employees, all we can do is call the methods and properties that are common to the employee class.